Okay, the goal on this one was to factor. Uh, as you remember, the, uh, the whole idea is to factor this thing into two binomials. And because this is an x squared right here, I know that the first two terms in each one have to be x. Because when you go to remultiply them, FOIL as we like to say, uh, x times x is going to get you x squared. Well, these numbers here are what you have to find next. And the clues are, we know they have to multiply together to get 30. So there really aren't that many possibilities. Could be 1 and 30, could be 2 and 15, could be 3 and 10, or it could be 5 and 6, or maybe maybe negatives of those, that those would also get 30. Uh, but uh, uh, we're, we're looking for one of these pairs, and the trick we've used is look at this number here and look at this sign. This sign tells you I'm looking for a sum of numbers in this group, and this number tells me the sum of what. So I'm, I'm looking for... Uh, sum of 14, and uh, just discovered that uh, I don't have one. So I'm going to change the problem here so it actually works out to be one that will work. Let's make that a 13. That's embarrassing. Uh, and uh, so, story of my life. Uh, so now, uh, they do that on Khan Academy too, by the way. He's always having goofy things that happen, and he gets nationally published, but what the heck. Uh, so I'm looking for a sum of 13. Well, there it is right there, 3 and 10. Okay. Uh, the last question is this. Do, do they need to be plus 3 and plus 10, minus 3, minus 10, a combination of each? Well, the, you, know, you know they're going to have to be either both pluses or both minuses because they have to multiply together to get positive 30. Well, only plus 3 and plus 10 will give you plus 13 when you, uh, when you multiply it out. So there you go. There's the factored form. So with this one, it's, it's the more complicated type because now there's a number out in front of the x squared. And the technique we used was to multiply uh, 4 and 5 together and get 20. We'll ignore the negative for just a little bit. And we'll write all the factor pairs out. 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. Uh, and uh, that's it. I'm looking again for, this time, a difference of 8, and that would be... 2 and 10. Okay. Well, here's where we split from, from uh, what we did before and use a different technique. I'm going to take that 2 and 10 that I got from here, put x's behind them because it's really an 8x up here, and then ask, how would I put signs on these so when I combine them together, I'd get 8? Well, they can't both be plus because uh, that's 12x, but if I make this a negative and this a plus, now that'll combine together to get 8x, and I'll bring my 4x squared down and my minus 5. So now, what I'm going to do is just briefly ignore these two terms right here and only look at these two. Okay. And I'm going to ask, what's the biggest thing I can factor out of each of these terms? And the answer is a 2 and an x. Okay. Well, what's left over when I factor that out? Well, 2x times what would give me 4x squared, a 2x. And 2x times what would give me negative 2x right here, negative 1. Okay. Now... I'm going to look at this pair and ignore this pair for a little bit. What's the biggest thing I could factor out of there? A positive 5. Okay. What's left over? Well, 5 times what gives you 10x? That's 2x. And 5 times what gives you negative 5? A negative 1. Okay. Well, I'm nearly done. I'm noticing now that each of these terms has a 2x minus 1 in it. Okay. This term in red has a 2x minus 1. And this term in green has a 2x minus 1. So what I'm going to do is factor a 2x minus 1 out of each of those things and write what's left over. Well, take this thing in red and divide 2x minus 1 out of it, you get a 2x. Okay. Take this thing in green and divide a 2x minus 1 out of it, you get a plus 5. And now we have a factored form of that uh, quadratic. So... Lastly, we're going to use factoring to solve this equation. And uh, it's the simpler type, which is nice. And uh, so I know it's going to have parentheses that look like that. And again, I know this has to be an x because x times x has to get you x squared. The numbers over here have to multiply together to get 24. So I'll step over here and find all the combinations that multiply together to get 24. Uh, and I'm looking for a pair that's got a difference of 3. Well, that's 
None of them. Great. Did it again. Okay. So, no problem. We'll just pretend that this problem actually had a minus 2 there. And uh, ta-da. Now we've got a pair that works. Uh, don't try that at home. Uh, you, know, you don't get to just change the problem so it works right. But uh, it's my math class. So I can do what I want, I guess. Uh, so, uh, now I've got 4 and 6. Uh, those multiply together to get 24, and they subtract together to get 2. Uh, last question, what signs do they get? Well, if I make them both plus, they'd get a plus 24 when I multiply it. If I make them both minus, I'd get plus 24. Somebody's got to get a minus, somebody's got to get a plus. Well, the only way I could make that work so when I multiply them back together again and get negative 2x is to have negative 6 and negative 4, oh, positive 4. And so... Uh, so now, if I just do a quick check here, x squared times x, I'm sorry, x times x is x squared, x times negative 6 is negative 6x, 4 times x is positive 4x, those combine together to get negative 2x, and positive 4 times negative 6 is negative 24. All right, we're good. Well, now, I've got two things being multiplied together to get 0. One's in orange, and one is in purple. If the orange thing were 0, x would have to be negative 4. Okay? If the purple thing were 0, x would have to equal 6. So now I've found my two uh, solutions to that quadratic equation using factoring.